Okay, in this post we introduced an important numerical tool for analyzing and designing control systems. The name of this numerical tool is the Laplace transform. So, here is a brief outline. First, we are going to explain why do we need Laplace transformation or transform. Then we are going to define it and we are, then we are going to uh, show you how to compute Laplace transform for several characteristic functions in control systems such as uh, a step function, a ramp function and an exponential function. So before I start with my explanations, I have to mention that I have made a post accompanying uh, this uh, video and the post can be found on my website. A link is given in the description below. So all the examples that I will do in this video are actually being done and nicely explained in the post. So you can see here the post. The first question we need to answer is why the Laplace transform is important for control engineers. Well, there are many, many, many applications of the Laplace transform in control systems. For example, this transform is used to analyze the stability of control systems or more generally of dynamical systems, of linear dynamical systems. So how can we visualize uh, stability? In our case, the system looks like this. So for example, it's just a ball and a valley and the ball can oscillate if we release the ball. So the ball comes here, then it oscillates. And so in this case, the system is stable if the oscillations are kind of limited or the amplitude of oscillations doesn't grow. The system is asymptotically stable if eventually the ball will settle in the equilibrium position. So there is one more thing that has to be mentioned here. We cannot talk about system stability. We can talk about stability of the equilibrium points, but we are going to talk about that in our future videos. So in the Laplace transform can analytically tell us if such a system is stable. Of course, if we can describe such a system by a system of uh, differential equations. Then the Laplace transform is used to compute the system response to prescribe initial conditions and input signals. So often in control engineering, we would like to test the system. So if this is a system S, we would like to compute its response to certain signals. So let's say to a sinusoidal signal. How our system will behave if we give a sinusoidal signal to its input, how the output will look like. The system that's properly designed will have the following response. So the Laplace transform can help us to predict the system response. Then, remember from mathematics, in mathematics, in, uh, in one of your elementary courses on linear differential equations, you have used the Laplace transform to solve ordinary differential equations. So you have transformed the problem of solving uh, ordinary differential equations into algebraic problem, right? Okay, so let us define the Laplace transform. So what is the Laplace transform? The Laplace transform transforms functions from time domain to the complex domain. So if we have a function f of t, and t is time, this is a function of time, f is function of time, the Laplace transform transforms this function into the complex domain. It assigns a new function to the function 
f and we call this function capital F and the argument becomes a complex number s. So what are complex numbers? Well from mathematics we know that complex numbers have a real part denoted like this and an imaginary part denoted like this. So a complex number is a point in the complex plane. It has a real part, usually denoted by sigma in control engineering, and it has an imaginary part denoted by omega. So we can represent S as a sum of sigma plus J times omega, where J is the imaginary unit so j equals square root of minus one next we mathematically define the laplace transform so mathematically speaking or from the mathematical point of view f of s is equal to an integral from zero minus to infinity f of t times e to the power minus s t dt. So, a few comments here are in order. The integration starts from 0 minus. 0 minus is basically a number that is very close to actual 0. So 0 minus is 0 minus epsilon, where epsilon is an infinitesimally small number. So integration starts basically from here and goes to infinity. The second comment is that s in the above expression is a constant. And the third comment is that not every function has a Laplace transform. So the function has to sub satisfy some special conditions such that it, it has the Laplace transform. So from here, we can see if f grows rapidly, for example, like this, such that the negative exponential function cannot attenuate, then the overall, if you multiply these two functions, the overall expression can grow to infinity and in these cases this integral will not exist. So this should be kept in mind. We are not going to talk about this in uh, these lectures since this goes out of the scope of a basic control engineering course. But it's good to know. Next, we compute the Laplace transform of some basic characteristic functions in control engineering. So the first function that comes to my mind as a control engineer is a step function. Now, what is a step function and why do we need to use a step function? If I have an unknown system, let's call it S, and I don't know anything about such a system, so as a control engineer, the first step I will take is to perturb such a system. So to its input, I will place a step function. So the step function has, this, has the following form. Before 0, it's 0. At 0, it becomes equal to some constant c. And it becomes constant. So this is a step function. And the system will exhibit some response. So let us compute the Laplace transform of the step function. We just apply the definition. So f of s equals integral from 0 to infinity. We will ignore the 0 minus sign. And our function is just equal to c and we multiply this by, by e to the power minus s t dt. Now, since c is a constant, it goes out of the integral, and 
the problem boils down to the problem of computing this integral. Now, this is just a basic integral and we can apply the elementary formula and this integral becomes c over minus s e to the minus st from 0 to infinity. So how do we know that we didn't make a mistake? Well, if we take a derivative of this expression, we should obtain the expression that's under the integral. Now, let us now substitute the bounds. So f of s becomes This term obviously goes to zero when t approaches infinity and e to the power zero becomes equal to one. So at the end we obtain f of s is equal to c over s. So if the function is a step function then its Laplace transform is c over s. The next popular function used in control engineering is the RAM function. So the RAM function has the following form. Before zero, it's equal to zero. And after zero, it becomes a linear function. Mathematically speaking, this function has the following form. for t larger or equal than 0. So let us compute the Laplace transform of this function. We apply the definition. Now let us analyze this integral. We cannot simply solve this integral. So we need to use some rule for solving this integral. So in this case, we should recognize that this problem can be solved using the integration by part rule. So usually people remember the integration by parts rule. However, I always like to derive the formula. So I will teach you now how to derive the formula. So we have two functions, u and v. And if we take uh, the derivative of these two functions, we obtain v times du plus u times dv. Now, if we integrate this expression, we will obtain And from this expression, we can obtain the formula for the integration by part. So we can write v times du equals u times v minus integral u times dv. The next problem is how to choose the u and v functions. So in this case, the problem is relatively easy. We can choose v as ct. From there we obtain that dv equals c dt since c is a constant and du is equal to e to the power minus st dt. Now if we integrate this expression we obtain that u is equal to 1 over minus s e minus s t. Now if we take the derivative of the right hand side we should obtain the left hand side which is correct. Now by substituting these two uh, expressions in the original integral we obtain f of s becomes an integral 
from 0 to infinity. I'm going to just write it again just for the sake of uh, clarity. Now, applying this formula, we can obtain C D over minus S E to the minus D S and we have bounds from 0 to infinity minus integral from 0 to infinity C over minus S E to the minus D S D D now how we are going to evaluate these bounds. So uh, let us focus on the on the first on the first bound. So the first bound can be written as follows: one over minus s multiplying c t over e to the power t s from zero to infinity. Now, if we substitute the first bound, we obtain c times infinity over e to the power infinity times s. And the second term becomes equal to 0 since we have a 0 in the numerator. So the second term becomes 0. Now let us analyze this term. So what do we have? In the numerator we have infinity and in the den denominator we also have infinity. And this ter term has the form of infinity over infinity so we can apply the L'Hopital's rule. However, uh, I'm not going to apply the L'Hopital's rule for the sake of brevity. And I always like to do things in a more engineering way. So from the engineering point of view, we have, what do we have here? We have a linear function ct, right? And then we have an exponential function e to the minus ts, or if we take one over e to the power ts, so we have e to the power ts. We have a function that grows like this. Now, obviously, in infinity, e to the power t becomes larger, much, much larger to the, than the linear function. So the term in the denominator is a much larger term in, than in the numerator. So this term becomes zero. So the total expression becomes equal to zero. So at the end, our Laplace transform has the following for, form. Now, from our previous slide, we should recognize that this term C e to the minus T s is just a Laplace transform of a step function and it's equal to C over s. So the total expression becomes 1 over s squared times C. So this is the Laplace transform of the ramp function. If you have a quadratic function, uh, the quadratic question function will have a similar form, only you will have here um, power, s to the power, third power, and then probably you will have another 1 over 2 or something like that. You can always refer to tables. So these are two functions, two introductory functions. In the next video, I will explain how to compute the Laplace transform of the exponential function and of the sinusoidal function. Thank you for your attention.